Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are talking about risk today. Risk, I have subtitled it as certitude is injurious to life, okay, and we will see how. Everybody familiar with risk? Every time when you are about to take risk, the symptoms are that of heart beating a little fast and usually a little bit of sweating in the hands. Okay? So, that if you are a human being, then those are the typical symptoms of when you are about to take risk or you are present to that experience which we call risk. And certitude is quite the opposite as we will see through this episode. I am going to uh, begin with sharing a quotation, one of my favorite quotations. Um, it is called The Dilemma and it is by an unknown author. Uh, let me just read it for you. To laugh is to risk appearing a fool. And as I am reading it, I request you to uh, look to see if this maps for you, if this is relevant for you, if you see yourself in any one of those or many of those, as many of those sentences. Okay? So, the dilemma of what it is to be a human being. To risk, I say that again, to laugh is to risk appearing a fool. To weep is to risk appearing sentimental. To reach out for another is to risk involvement. To expose feeling is to risk rejection. To place your dreams before the crowd is to risk ridicule. To love is to risk not being loved in return. To go forward in the face of overwhelming odds is to risk failure, but risks must be taken because the greatest hazard in life is to risk nothing. The person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, is nothing. One may avoid suffering and sorrow, but cannot learn, feel, change, grow or love. Chained by one's certitude, one is a slave. Only a person who takes risks is free. I will leave that up for you, for you read before I go to the next slide. Take a few seconds to go over it. The word to focus on over there is certitude. Certitude, the dictionary meaning of certitude is certainty, confidence, freedom from doubt. And the synonyms are conviction, assurance and belief. And this seems a little at odds with what we are always trying to do. I mean, if you go somewhere, they would say you should have confidence, you should have certainty. But what I am proposing is something which is not the same. If you just reviewed the previous quotation, the dilemma, the last few lines, the person who risks nothing, does nothing, has nothing, is nothing. It is not that life will not go on, if you did not risk, life would go on. But our entire attempt, at our entire effort as human beings has been to eliminate uncertainty, to bring certainty wherever we can. We can even say we are addicted to certainty, wherever there is uncertainty, we start feeling very uncomfortable, it is risky. But what then goes with it is the flip side that if you do not risk, I do not know then what it is to live. A little controversial probably, but I invite you to look at it from a place such that there is an opening for you for something that you could actually be using for your communications. So, when the attention is on certitude. it usually has some face of fear. We are trying to get certainty, because there is some fear. It is not that the fear disappears with, certain, with certainty or with certitude, it is just that we have found a place, where it is minimally experienced. On the other side, if your focus was, if your attention was on newness, and what could be, 
then there is a new paradigm which is that of courage. So, you are not trying to avoid fear, what you are doing is you are engaging in the newness of what could be and for that you would access courage. There is a quotation here, courage is not the absence of fear, by and large we believe that you know people who are courageous actually do not have fear, no if there was no fear you would not need courage probably. So, courage is not the absence of fear, but rather the judgment that something is more important than fear. The brave may not live forever, but the cautious do not live at all. Now, by and large you and I are told when we were kids, we were told if I said I am afraid or I have, I am afraid somebody would say do not be afraid. Okay. And uh, that for me is no different from saying do not think of a pink elephant. So, if I tell you now do not think of a pink elephant, please do not, please do not think of a pink elephant right now, guess what you are doing, you will actually be thinking of a pink elephant. So, the moment I say do not be afraid, do not have fear, I do not know whether the fear will go away or I will not be afraid, in fact it might even deepen it further. So, then the question is how do I access courage, so it is a simple question. As kids you and I learned how to ride bicycles, so what gave you access to balance on a bicycle? You got onto the bicycle, you fell down, you got onto the bicycle, you fell down, you got onto the bicycle, you fell down, you asked somebody to hold it and push you and then hold you and push you and you fell down and hold and push you and at some point in time you started riding the bike. Interestingly balance on a bicycle nobody can give to you, the only way to access it is getting onto the bicycle, falling a few times till you get it, nobody puts you on the bike, you get on the bike yourself and everything that I know what there is to do, I do on the bike and still I keep falling, but at some point in time balance becomes available and it is one of those things that if it becomes available, even if you do not ride a bicycle for 10 years, 20 years, you know that if you picked up the bicycle you would be able to ride it again. So, I am going to leave you with a question then, which of your bicycles would require access to courage? Balance on a bicycle is only available on the bicycle, balance on the bicycle is only available on the bicycle. So, if you needed to access courage, you would have to tell me what is the quote unquote bicycle that you committed to riding. Thank you.